This is your week two waiver wire show. I'm Dustin. Welcome to Fantasy Smack Talk. You know, week one is supposed to give us more answers and not leave us with more questions. What definitely one of the craziest week ones I've ever seen as far as fantasy goes. You know, you had a ton of guys that were drafted in the first two rounds that didn't really do that much. And we have even more question marks when it comes to all these crazy running back situations. And you look at the Bills, the Colts, the Giants, the Jets, the Dolphins, the Bengals, the Steelers, and the Broncos. All those running back situations are just a mess right now, which is not what fantasy owners want. But hopefully this waiver wire video will help a little bit. Let's talk about the must in all leagues. We'll start with a couple of receivers. Julian Edelman is going to be probably the most picked up guy as far as percentage wise. Only on about 30% of leagues right now. You know, once waivers clear tomorrow, he's going to jump up and get owned in a ton of leagues. And I do think he is a must add in all leagues. And I wouldn't even mind using a bad waiver number on or a decent waiver number on him if you plan on using him this week. Because especially you know, with Amendola banged up, uh, Vereen out for an extended period of time, Gronkowski you know, isn't quite ready yet. So Edelman could definitely be a nice start for you. So if you're really desperate, if you start out 0-1 and he would be a nice wide receiver upgrade for your starting lineup, I don't mind that this week just to get a high upside receiver. Next, Brian Hartline only on about 50% of the leagues. The, the hate has gone way too far with for Hartline. He was a thousand yard receiver last year. Mike Wallace is taking a lot of attention off of him. You know, I don't know if he'll quite match his numbers from a year ago, but the potential is there. That offense, you know, still does have a decent amount of weapons. They might be able to move the ball better than they did last year. So Hartline, he needs to at least be owned, you know, as a decent receiver to, you know, plug in during your bye weeks. I wouldn't use a, a good waiver number on him, but I do think he needs to be owned in all leagues. And Julius Thomas is the is the last must add in all leagues, tight end for Denver. I'm sure all of you saw what he did on primetime the first game of the season. This guy looked really good. One thing to consider though, obviously there's a ton of mouths to feed out there in Denver, so I do think he will be inconsistent, but he's probably gonna have some more big games. So I, I definitely don't think top 10 tight end is out of the question. So, you know, if you're looking for an upgraded tight end, if you have say kind of like a Kyle Rudolph type guy or Greg, even Greg Olson, you know, might consider doing a swap there or, or just carrying two tight ends until we see you know, what Thomas does over his next couple of weeks. One must add in, in all PPR leagues, and that's Joyke Bell. Only on a 35% of leagues right now. You know, this guy is going to be heavy in that offense, and he's behind a fragile Reggie Bush. So if, if Bush ends up going down, I think Bell has a lot of upside. So even in, in deeper standard leagues, I think uh, Bell has some value. But all PPR leagues, I think he's definitely worth an add. Let's talk about some guys in deeper leagues. We'll start with some running backs. No Sean Moreno, only on 45% of leagues. <laughs> I mean, I, I still think Ball is going to be the guy out there. I think most people do, but until he's, you know, until the coaching staff really has more confidence in him and pass protection, it looks like Moreno is going to get a decent amount of touches. So until that happens, I, I like him as a must add in deeper leagues. Fred Jackson, aka CJ Spiller's worst nightmare, looked really good week one. You know, I think they're just going to keep continuing to, to make that a timeshare, you know, if Jackson keeps playing as well as he did. You know, he, he did really good in the running game and the passing game. Spiller didn't have that great of a game. Look for Fred Jackson to continue to get involved in that offense as long as he keeps doing what he did week one. And then Niall Davis is a guy that I, I think, I just have a feeling about Jamal Charles. I, I'm a little scared about him. You know, he's already been, he got a little bit banged up week one. He got a little bit banged up in the preseason. You know, I'm just... Just starting to see kind of a trend this year. I'm nervous. If you're Jamal Charles owner, you might want to just get Davis on your bench for some security. For some security. And if you are just looking for a high upside running back for your bench, I like Davis as a pickup. And let's talk about Terrell Pryor for Oakland. Young, inexperienced quarterback out of Ohio State. Here's the thing. You can't, no matter what the situation, if, if you have a running quarterback, you can't really count them out in fantasy anymore. I know we've learned that over the last few years. You know, it doesn't matter if they can run, they can score fantasy points. And he did that week one. He's on a terrible offense, but he's one of the best weapons on that offense. They're going to ask him to do a lot. They're going to be playing from behind a lot. I think he's a must add in deeper leagues. All type of two quarterback leads, I think he's a must add. And I think he could offer low end QB1 value, but QB2 is, is really where I have him as, as potential you know, high QB2, but you know, we'll see what he did, what he can do, but he looked pretty good week one, and if he can give you 50 plus rushing yards a game, you know, that's not too shabby. And let's talk about some guys to keep an eye on. Tyler Eifert, only on the 25% of leagues. You know, this is a guy that, you know, the Bengals drafted really high, you know, they had high hopes for this tight end, and I hate rookie tight ends, but 
I think he might have one of the best rookie tight end seasons that we've seen in a while. You know, he might crack the top 15, so something along those lines. So deeper leagues, you know, a bi-week fill-in, that type of thing. I'm not calling him a must add or anything like that, but definitely keep an eye on Tyler Eifert. And then also, Kenny Stills for the Saints, only in 15% of leagues. They spread the ball around too much in New Orleans for me to, to say to pick him up, but he's definitely someone that's, you know, got my attention. You know, Lance Moore, if he gets hurt or Colson gets hurt and, and, uh, and Stills is thrown into the starting lineup, I think he could have a lot of value. But as of right now, I'm just saying keep an eye on him. And then one pickup and play defense I like for week two, and that's Carolina. They're only about 10% owned right now. They are on the road against the Bills. You know, I don't like that they're on the road, but Carolina's defense has gotten a lot better through the years, and they looked really good week one against Seattle. I think they get to the rookie quarterback, maybe for some turnovers. I do like Carolina's defense week two for a pickup and play. Now, this is just a portion of the list. To see the full list, get onto the website. Get in the forums if you got any questions. Don't forget about FanDuel. If you use promo code FST2013, you'll get a free t-shirt, and you'll also get a 100% sign-up bonus. So go ahead and check that out as well. I'm Dustin. We'll see you later in the week.